Travelling to Midhurst in West Sussex with guest Chris Halton of Haunted Earth, we explore the remains of the disused old railway. to Petersfield Railway opened in the mid-19th century, although railway politics meant that instead of planning a route to Petersfield, separate railways were built in the direction of Midhurst in 1864 from both east and west. The construction was plagued with problems, which had delayed the work, especially in the engineering of the Midhurst Tunnel, which had suffered a partial collapse. The railway line had virtually ceased use by the end of the 1950s, as passenger service demand was low, and on the 16th of October 1964, the station finally closed. Another contribution to its closure occurred on the morning of the 19th of November 1951, when just south of Midhurst, floods washed away an embankment, and approaching locomotive fell into the bank, with the crew of the train just leaping to safety in time. Joining Patricia Walterworth, medium Alan Barnett and myself on the first of a two-part investigation at separate locations is special guest Chris Halton of Haunted Earth, and I was interested to see what two like-minded mediums will pick up on at this disused track and tunnels. I think actually we're on a railway bridge near the pub. We are. Oh, yeah, we are indeed. So a bit of light here. There's Alan over there just uh, scouting around the yes, background. Sir, yes. And we're joined by Mr. Chris Holton from And there's me. Earth. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm fine. It's very good to be here, actually. We're very happy to have you here. We're actually on our way to investigate a railway tunnel. Railway tunnel, yeah. But it's not being used, though, is it? Uh, no, it's all deserted. Yeah. It's actually right underneath us, actually. We're, we're on the bridge now. Uh, and so we're going to need to, I think, move over to towards there and go down. Yeah, oh, there's a sign that Alan told me about. Okay, we found the little um, bridge down. The entrance. Right, it's we need to bridge, we need it? to work, be very, very careful with your steps here, guys. I can just feel it. I, just as we walked across there, we're down here. I can feel two people, a man and a boy, looking at us. You're right. Okay. Oh, here, Chris. Right. First of all, I've got a the brand new. I don't know if I did get to you because I kept telling you that I had something before I arrived here, and you said not to say anything, and. It's a man. There's definitely a man here. I can't get any more detail that the man is not that old. I would say a fairly young man. And I would take it, yeah, it had to be some sort of accident or whether that caused his death. I just have an impression, a very weak impression, of a collapse on the embankment and where two people, or at least one person I should say, I'm not sure about the boy, at least that man, I feel, died in that kind of... when they were digging this out. He's not old. He's... sort of 20s, I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Something I'm not, like that. I'm not getting any kind of uh, indent on yeah. the age of this person. But the boy is probably about 12, maybe 14 years. You see, there's other things that have happened. When they were excavating these railway lines, there was always a risk of um, soul slip, but also there were other hazards, for example, dirty water, bad hygiene, and a number of people died of, uh, of what is now today avoidable diseases, basically. But here at the moment, I'm not sure if, I actually feel that's more residual. I'm not feeling anybody no, it is residual. A actively haunting this area, unless we can draw them through. I feel it's residual anyway. What I'm, get, what I'm getting yeah. is residual, yeah. not active, and it's, it's, it's this man standing there. I can't get the boy still, I'm not getting anything about the boy, but the man, like I say, to me is in his 20s and he died here in some sort of accident, and it's a residual thing. 
it's the presence, it's, it's that essence. Mm -hmm. But do you feel, Alan, on a lot of these things, that many of these spiritual presences tend to keep a safe distance? Oh, I think you're right, they do, you know? yeah. There's sometimes, quite often, that you feel them around wow. you, but they never come in close, and they just keep their distance. And I say that, and you pick something up, but they're not, they won't come in. So you won't get any further with them. It's right. like they just keep... I think we've said this yes, before, yeah, very much so. The man is residual. There's no doubt about that. For me, it's residual, anyway. No, I think I, I would agree. Uh, the energy that I'm feeling as, in, with regard to the man and to the boy is residual. But there is a lot of attention, there's a lot of attraction around us at the moment. I'm seeing a lot of energy sparks and flashes. It's over the back there now. And just one or two splashes over the back there. Just little red pinpricks of light. Yeah, I definitely felt the energy around I can you. Because I physically feel something that's come in since you moved over there, since I've been standing there on my own. I felt there was something standing behind me looking over my shoulder and I can feel it around me and I can feel it all over me at the moment. I know it's a male, but I don't know who or what it is. I've no idea. I'm not getting anything else with this, but I just know there's something. You've also got to bear in mind how many people like tramps have lived here over the years and mm -hmm. people that might have slipped and fell. Now I'm spending perfume now, which is not a bad thing. Just a very, very quick flash of perfume. Exactly right, because that's where it is the residual energy, the man is over there. And that's exactly what he said in the first place. You see, he's getting the man and the boy, he's over there. He's over there. I've got a feeling that if you did a bit of research further down this line, not here, there was a, an accident, a bad one. Just a, just a feeling that I have. More over to this side, to your left. Yeah. I saw some flashes over here, first of all, mm. and then come over here. Okay. Music as well. I can hear music, but I can't hear music. I can't explain what I'm saying, really, but I just feel music. Anything please, anyone around, you want to come forward? Walking through the undergrowth, yeah. we head towards the old tunnel. It's a fascinating place. Just stopped and you've come across something. Yeah. No, just, just here, as I walked into it, it was very, very strong. I can still feel it here. It's mostly around. And a, and a smell. Okay. But here is definitely an energy I could feel, but it's moved. Anything. I want yeah. an owl. Do you? Owl! There you go. Where's the owls hooting? Hoot, hoot. <laughs> now this is energy here. Yeah. Didn't he say you have to climb over? Yeah, we do, yeah. Like climb over that. Whether it be a noise or touch any member here. I'd love to walk down the entire end of it. Go right down the end. Now that sounds physical. It did. Come on then, if you're there, come towards us. Can someone try and bend those bars back a bit? What if we try and bend them? Walk up. towards us. Let's hear you walking. Let's hear your footsteps. Let's hear you walk towards us. You can do this. Come on. I know there's at least one male there. Mark is now attempting to climb over a spiked the fence. Saw, Mark, <laughs> Mark no, be careful the, there. The, the, the bit to try and get a leg no, out. No, you can. Short. You can do it, Mark. Go on, you're nearly there. <laughs> the problem here is you can't get leverage on the other side and you would fall. If you're no, trying you won't. To Look, it's only a little fall. Little I, wait, I could, I could give you... Sort of the leg over, but you wouldn't get back. I just want to squeeze through there, Pat, see if I'm So, what we're doing here, Chris is locking off his camera. We're going to go back down to the other tunnel. We're going to leave the camera here and uh, see if we can get any EVP 
Um, the tunnel's quite long, there's a lot of echo that might be coming in from the other side, but it's still a place we'd love to have a walk down, but we just can't get in. The top of the tunnel looking down? Well, yeah, on, on, you know, if you look at it the top, you can see it, whatever's mm -hmm. running across the top of it, if it's a road or whatever, but I had the sensation of someone standing there looking down at us. It's like they were wondering what we're doing and who we are. And they were just looking down, watching us. Says Patricia. Just as we were wandering around, <laughs> all of us actually thought that this looked like a crucifix and this might be a grave, but it's this not. Is it's L-E-V, LEV or something. It it's actually, there. it looks like a railway electricity marker. You usually get them on the edge of railway mm. lines, marking boxes and junctions and things. Oh, what lovely to From my there. experience. It looks kind of weird, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's what I've seen before along railway lines. Our walk around the old railway had been very interesting, and at the time, none of us had any knowledge of its history. Both Alan and Chris had worked very well together, and I was eager to see what they could both come out with at the next location on this evening's investigation.